expect, but we do have a specific game to watch. Rise Nation, Unilad on Gibraltar of all maps. Airborne Hunker, AR class here for Gunless. So when you talk about being in down sight, he's not going to have that extra space, space speed without infantry or scope, but he's just going to be posting up inside gold here. Now keep in mind, Rise Nation, they're spawning on the side on the map that you want to hold, going to that next hard point. So at the very ca last uh, case, no matter what happens off the break, you want to make sure if you're Rise Nation to hold this back side of the map. Well, you got Slasher. He's in the god spot. This is about the best position any player on this map could possibly be in for the pit. Got any shots? He gets gunned. Yeah, Shawnee with the bar takes him down. And I will say, uh, of all performances we saw at Seattle, Shawnee absolutely probably had one of the best. He was disgusting. The problem, of course, for Unilad is they still didn't place that high, so they didn't get a lot of maps under their belt. But absolutely, he's my player to watch. He's going to get on a three streak, has four kills to his name. He's looking for more. He's going to go. find five as well. And this is a fantastic start. Again, Unilad, they've been getting hyped up and off the rip, 43 to nothing, and they're going to finish, what, with 55 points? Amazing start. Bit of an ambitious challenge from Zed as he was 3-0. Had good progression towards streaks as well. If he's able to find that kill in the capture points, then there's a chance for him to earn that glide bomb as well as future streaks. Good setup for Rise Nation here. Going into the second hard point is Shawnee playing around the back, but for the time being, he's really all alone as it's Unilad trapped over near the turret side of the map. Zed going to make his way in through gold as Rise Nation are now putting on their first points of the game. Well, with how slow Unilad is taking this approach, they really only get one chance to break, but they have the perfect uh, uh, option as well. Players through goal, players coming in the back, but you got to win the gunfights, and they're losing them everywhere. The nade's coming in. Shawnee with the two-piece. Again, the amazing start he's had. He's trying to let it ride, but he's going to get taken down inside the hill, and it looks like for the moment, ooh, well, Rise maybe not going to hold on. Zed trying to be a, a little bit confusing, but... Yeah, I, I guess a, a win of a hill, you could say, from Unilad. They retain their huge lead, uh, and they might be able to fight for the scrap time. There's yeah. one player in the back. Look at TJ. TJ snuck all the way around the back for Rise Nation, and then Shawnee is on the hunt. As he goes around the corner, TJ's not going to spot him, so both players contested for the spawns, but he's just going to get surrounded and swarmed by the Unilad players. TJ falls, and he spawns as far away as you possibly can for this upcoming hardpoint. Meanwhile, you have Looney trying to lurk in through Cave. He's been spotted while the rest of Rise Nation, they're going to fan out on the map, start to spread out, and see what kind of angles of attack they could take. One thing you love to see on this hard point when you're trying to break into Castle Road is a smoke grenade. Throw one down at the end of the bridge, block off those lines of sight. Could really help you close the gap between you and the opposing team's assault rifle players. Well, I hear no smokes, but you do see Rise making the approach, but TJ's going to get picked. Slasher's going to get picked, and you see Gunless. Maybe he gets a kill, but that's because players are pushing out. Now you got Shawnee in the power position, and he's basically impossible to get past. Like, that smoke is doing nothing to him, so this is a tough road for Rise Nation. Unilad has been doing uh, pretty great so far. Yeah, it's been a good start, and they've been able to follow it through as well. But my one concern is, can they keep it going throughout the entire game, especially as we start to look ahead towards the second rotations of Hills? We saw it with Epsilon back in Division A. They, you know, can stay toe-to-toe -to -toe throughout that first rotation of hard points, but then they start to fall behind, and they, they struggle with keeping play at, at the same pace with the other team. But Rise Nation, they have their early rotation. They're down by around 50 points going to this third hard point. But look at the setup. They have all their angles covered. They have a good spread going. They just need to find the kills in transition. And they can lock this down for a full 60 if they keep it up. Well, Looney doing a pretty good job of locking down Cave. And he's got players that are watching all the sides. So Unilad, again, uh, you can see the approach. They're taking their time with their breaks. But they're making sure that they get about the perfect setup. They got two players coming in from mid and then a player on every side. So the pinch is here. You got to win the gunfight, though. And now you see Looney's going to fall. Slasher's going to be kind of that final stand mid-map, and you see the spawn coming in, in the back, but honestly, they're going so slow. I, I know you got to take your time to make sure you get their breaks, but it seems like they're wasting so much time, but now the gunfight's getting traded out, but even still, DJ just been milking up every last second inside the hard point. Well, I like the fact that they are taking their time, and they're getting coordinated with it, but maybe a, a little bit quicker, and also helps when you win the gunfights to enter into the hard point, but it's Rise Nation. They're able to tie up the game, perhaps take the lead if they lock down the remaining scrap time, depending on when they want to give it up. But now they're starting to get heated up. They're winning their engagements with the map. They're starting to fight for power positions as we're start to we're about to start the second rotation of hard points here. It's Looney up towards top stone. He gets taken care of, so it's going to be Unilad with the early setup here. And we're essentially at a tie game, essentially where the game started off at. And this is pit center. Uh, again, Unilad did fantastic the first time around. And the only thing they could really improve on is making sure that while they're on this hill, they make sure to get the spawns for next. But Fry's Nation finally inside. I think they've overcome, uh, at least done a nice job of overcoming that like 60 point deficit they found themselves at. But once again, Shawnee, it, it seems like he's the man that's just constantly picking up the two or three pieces that his team needs in the kill feed. We've seen that six or seven times now. Uh, and once again on pit center with the bar, locking things down. And 
that's important to bring up as well, I think. Just you got one team sticking with the STGs, the other, they're rocking the bars, and that's always that kind of semi-meta battle going on inside the map. Yeah, obviously, Shawnee's having a great game with his, a with his AR play, but Zed's also been able to follow up the SMG at times. He had an explosive start to this game. Started to fall off a little bit, but still 12-7. and seven, A fine scoreline to have as a sub player on a map like Gibraltar. Still Rise Nation with a fragile lead as we're about to enter the second hard point. Moving over towards Fort Courtyard. Fighting down through top zone. It's going to be Shawnee. So important to stay alive in that position as now it's going to be Alex here to follow up. Meanwhile, his teammates coming off respawn. As Alex gets dealt with now, the spawns are going to be staggered a little bit for the side of Unilad. As Rise Nation, they have a chance to really start to uh, build a significant lead in this game. Well, Rise Nation, again, they're making sure that they just keep complete control of the map. Slasher's out here watching the back, and number seven on the map, Zed. It, it's taken him forever to go. He wrapped all the way back up to ladder, but he's going to get inside the hill. And you see, they're actually using smokes to get inside as well. And the important thing here, again, is, is they don't even necessarily want control of this hill. They want to keep Rise out for as long as possible and make sure they hold the spawns for next. So it's a similar story the first time around where, yes, Rise does get a lot of time on this hill, and they're able to extend lead. But this is not a terrible spot for Unilad until players start spawning in the back, which Zed just did. Yeah, absolutely. So it's now on the other three remaining Unilad players. Stay alive. Find kills in transition, and Zed is still spawning out. Keep that in mind. As these kills start to come in in transition to the upcoming Castle Road hardpoint, the spawns are going to play a massive or have a massive impact on this hell. Looney from behind, he's able to find two. One player left alive in the back for Unilad. It's going to be Wuskin. He's quickly dealt with. And just like that, Rise Nation win the rotation to Castle Road, and that could be the dagger as you start to look ahead in the game. Uh, on so many maps, I, I think you could say the same thing on Forest and St. Marie, but especially so on Gibraltar. The two to three rotation can win or lose you the game. And uh, again, the dagger is maybe too soon to call because again, Unilad had a pretty nice start. They're not out of this yet, but they're struggling to get back in the hill. Alex is in the back, but he's only able to find one. Zed can test for a second, but he's looking at players in closet and he's going to get shot by four different players. And uh, again, that's a swing where Unilad was trying to retake the lead and instead they find themselves down by 80, 90 points at the end of it. And now Slasher's just starting to find his rhythm in this game. It's Rise Nation up by about 80 points and growing as they're, they have a, a great lead in this game. And really just the reinforcement so quick. When you have those spawns in your favor, you just get there with, at the blink of an eye, just able to back your teammates up inside the hard point. But now looking over towards this upcoming turret hard point, you have Unilad with the early setup. But Rise Nation have been able to find their way out through the cave. And now they can fight for positioning. Shawnee trying to be isolated. Nice shots there from Gunless picking him off. As now the action going down inside the hard point, Rise Nation have some vantage points to work with. One player to take care of. And there you go. Rise Nation now with the setup, starting to rebuild that lead. And looking to close out the game on this hard point. And, and this is the most smokes I think we've ever seen used on a map of hard point this year. This They're mainly is like, coming from Unilad. Yeah, in three different hills. So again, you see the approach. They're like, all right, guys, we're in a bad spot. Sla or Gunless is in the power position. How do we get past his STG to get towards the hill? Use smokes and Gunless picks up too, but it doesn't matter because Alex is still inside. Zed's in the power spot, but he's going to get dropped. But either way, uh, again, the approach is there. The concept is there. It was executed well. Unilad, they just need to start winning more gunfights, right? Like the strategy isn't the problem you got. Zed negative four, Wuskin negative six, and Alex negative two. So again, Shawnee's trying, but it's the players on Rise. It just seems like gunfight to gunfight, Rise is just better. Yeah, absolutely. And my main concern was when we got into this second and future rotations of these hard points as we're back at pit center, it's a 50-point lead here for Rise Nation. And the one drawback for Unilad is because you like to employ a lot of smokes is now it's a trade-off. Do you want to run Hunker? Do you want to run Instincts? And Rise Nation, they know what's up. You can't use a smoke grenade if you want to use that armored division. So you, you know that one of those grenades that are going to be thrown at you will have an impact. And Rise Nation have been taking full advantage of that. Only need 15 more points to close out map one and have a strong start to this series. Unilad's been very patient with their breaks, but they don't have time to waste. They got to get inside the hill. And again, more smokes have been coming out, using them consistently, but it's not necessarily good enough. You got one player inside the hill, but he's going to have to stay alive again. Seven seconds is all it's going to take from Rise Nation to win the first map uh, of their week in Division B. Uh, and of course, they can win it here and they can win it on the next one, but that's going to be a slasher finds, I think, four at the end to make it happen in Rise Nation with the comfortable, I think is fair to say, 250 to 160, whatever it was. Check so out the new hair from Gunless. It blows my mind. It he was frying, he was frying this first map, and I will say it was a bit of a slow start for Rise Nation. You had Shawnee and Zed, they were really able to set the tone for Unilad early in this game, but they just weren't able to, to continue to play at that pace. Zed really falls off towards the tail end of the game. As Rise Nation, maybe it took a, a little bit of time for them to get warm up, warmed up and acclimated to the environment, but yeah, they look strong throughout the majority of that game one. 
And they're still, obviously, the heavy favorites coming to the series. Yeah, and again, ultimately, yes, gunfights were a huge factor. Like, Rise Nation, they just all went positive. But that uh, Hill 2 to Hill 3 rotation, uh, again, is the dagger on a lot of these maps. It was the opportunity for Unilad to get back in the game. Instead, they're down by 80, 90 points. And, and then, what can you do? God, they yell. It freaks me out. It really does. That's concerning. Hey, man, it's his hair. He can do what he wants it. I think he looks good. He could rock no, it. No, no, no. The concerning part is, like, Gunless was frying for the past, like, two years, right? Now he's confident enough that he's dyeing his hair blonde, so you got to deal with a more confident <laughs> Gunless. That's the scary part to me. Like, it's concerning, like, is he that good? Or Similar to does, Kenny like, with the bandana thing. It's uh, superstition at the end of the day, but talk a bit more about that map one. Uh, I don't think we saw any score streaks acquired by either team, and that could have been something that, I know, Slasher got pretty close. Zed a few times got super close, especially in the early stages of the game. I'm trying to think back. I can't remember many maps throughout World War II where we didn't see any score streaks earned. No, that, that's true. And, and again, I think the smokes actually probably played a decent part in it because the situation where Rise Nation, they go on a four or five streak how many different times, but then the players are going on the streaks or usually the AR guys that are posted up and then they just can't find kills. You cause confusion, you force people to go in bad spots. So again, I, I appreciate the time has been taken clearly by Unilad to talk over strategy. Didn't pay dividends in map number one. Again, they had one bad rotation. But for s and if they have something similar, if they have a, a bunch of party tricks in the bag, they could easily come away uh, and win this map number two and get that ball rolling. Yeah, and I know our expectations are fairly low for this Unilad squad, but I, I like the time they took when it came down to breaking into hard points. It seemed like they had a good idea and a good plan to uh, approach breaking some of the hard points there in Gibraltar. Sometimes your plans don't work out or don't go accordingly to how you want them to, but it's good to see that they have that in-depth knowledge and, and thinking about it. And just now looking ahead in the series, as you were talking about the Valkyrie search and destroy, maybe they got some party tricks for us. We'll see if they could throw Rise Nation off as Rise Nation so far sitting comfortably in the series. Just joining us now is a round, what was it, like an 80, 90 point win for them on that Gibraltar hard point. But yeah, Unilad, serious underdogs in this matchup. And I think Valkyrie would be the perfect map so far. It's going to be the least practiced map in the game still just because it got added halfway through the year. So this is the biggest opportunity to, again, pull out those party tricks, to have those specific strats. Of course, Valkyrie, maybe there's not a, a huge margin of creativity that you can have uh, just because of the nature of boots on the ground. But at least something is still there. And, and again, Unilad, that's the expectation. Their, their goal here, because again, they have the toughest day anyone in both divisions is going to have. You play against Rise. What can you really do? Best team in the game. And then you got to go against Optic later on, who might end up being the best team in the game. You want as many maps as possible, because if you lose both those series, who really cares? Like yeah. that, that is the expectation. You want to get top four, you don't necessarily need to win the division, right? You're just trying to make it to playoffs. And I'm not trying to sell them short early on, but realistically speaking. Well, yeah, you come out on day one and you play two favorites to, to finish one and two throughout Division B. But at the very least, they can look back at the footage and learn from it, right? So looning is always, losing is always learning. As a, I was looking at Looney's name, lots of L's being thrown at me, but here we go. Valkyrie search and destroy, Rise Nation versus Unilad. It's gonna be Rise Nation up first here on offense. Currently watching through the point of view of Sean. He had a great map one, and here you go. Aggression being shown right off the start, but I don't know why he backs up. In the meantime, first blood already coming in for Rise Nation. Watson falls, and just like that, it's all down to Zed, and he's dead. Zed is dead. Well, that was the most aggression I've seen on defense into the A site uh, on Valkyrie, and it did not work in no. the slightest. We talked about strategies coming out. That seems like something that they have talked over, and then like, oh yeah, if three of us are in the A site, they can just flank from literally everywhere, and then we're trapped in. But again, maybe if they get that first blood, it, it pays off. Yeah, Rise Nation maybe trying to play a bit more to feel out their opponents, and then obviously Unilat throwing a ton of aggression at Rise Nation in that round one. Uh, I respect the fact that you know they're willing to change up the pace like that. So now for future rounds, Rise Nation have to respect that aggression could come, but it's a full team eight, so perfect round for Rise Nation there in round one. Let's see if they can follow up here as now they're on defense. Well, TJ Alley gets a son. He's on the hunt. He actually catches two players at the exact same time, throwing utility at him, and now the nades come in from over top. Uh, and all of a sudden, first blood, second blood, and yes, one gets traded out for the advantage. Johnny, there. you know he's there. He's, yeah, he's dead, so Waskins for the 1v3. Shawnee knew that TJ was posted up there. At least he knew he was around the general area. TJ just got tagged up by a grenade as well, but not respecting the fact that the angle is open. As now it's down to Waskin, a 1v3 situation for him. He's been spotted, less than 50 seconds remaining. The bomb is dropped, not a whole lot going right for him, but if Rise Nation players overextend and overstep their boundaries, there's a chance for Waskin to make a play happen here. 
Obviously a lot going up against him. He's just trying to jiggle peek. Looking for information, see if he can catch somebody sprinting. And there's his first kill, but can't finish it up. The trade is there for TJ Howell, even if Weskin got the initial kill onto Looney. But it's Rise Nation jumping out to a 2-0 lead. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it did look like a bad challenge from Looney, because if he dies there, but you'll see the bullets coming in from the side. TJ made sure to time it perfectly. So a uh, very well-executed round. Uh, TJ gets the stun early on. They got at least double, if not more, coordinated nades coming out on the players. You get the first two kills just from nades in a round, you just win. Like, yeah. it's just, you win after that. Just such an early man advantage for Rise Nation. And plus, you know, that stun connects because Shawnee is choosing to run infantry at the start of that game, or at the start of that round. But here you go, moving into round number three. It's going to be Rise Nation back on offense. And it's their turn to attack the B-bomb site. Shawnee's going to have a lot of work to do here, but he can't get anything done. The early pick comes in for Rise Nation in the hands of Slasher. TJ does have the bomb in hand, 3-0, and so he's got good progression towards some streaks. Alex falls quickly after. Zed gets spotted. Looney might think of re-challenging this, but he has teammates behind him. Going to zone him out with the grenade. Doesn't finish the kill. The Rise Nation in a commanding position, even though Looney falls. It's still three on two with the bomb down. Yeah, Looney felt the pressure with the shots coming in from Wozkins, but now as long as no one overcommits from Rise Nation, they should be good to go. Uh, you're going to have all the cover in the world. You got time on your side, and you get the next pick. And once again, who is it? Wozkins in a 1v3. It's not going to pan out for him. You're not going to be able to win this round, but... Again, I think it's just the strategy. We saw the previous round, TJ, when he's looking uh, across that B site with the STG, he caught two players like throwing utility, right? Mm -hmm. Shawnee's almost in the exact same spot, uh, albeit with the PPSH, but when he's looking at the players from Rise, they have him pre aim They're just ready to go. You can't let the bomb just explode here. But TJ will wind up picking up the kill, so points do go to TJ. And just adding on to your point, it just seems like they're a bit unfamiliar with the, the early round timings here on, on Valkyrie Search and Strategy. You're saying getting caught throwing utility is never a good situation to be in because it's just not only free information but potential for free kills on the other team and and look it's always going to be a rough time when three of your teammates are going 0-3 throughout three rounds and everybody on Rise Nation has more kills than the entire team of Unilad so obviously a rough start for them but still rounds left and you just have to have a short-term memory start to think ahead take it round by round first order of business is to take out uh, TJ Holly. he's got the biggest progression towards streaks and because he hasn't died yet, it's really easy for Unilad to track the score. He's pulling out a bar to make it happen, of course. Uh, control the A-bomb site early on is going to be to Unilad. This is much more standard than we usually see, where the players from Rise Nation kind of have a bit of a surrounding on site. TJ, though, he's looking for that first blood. He feels Wuskins over on the other side of the wall, and he's aware of it. He's going to pre-aim. He's going to get caught out potentially. Good movement. And then just annihilates Wuskins, and he gets the streaks. They get the first blood, and all of a sudden, it's a 2v3 Unilad find themselves in once again. Good movement by all these players in Rise Nation, utilizing the cover to their advantage, and they're essentially baiting like these challenges out from Unilad. And once again, it's a player from Unilad left alive in a like a 1v3 situation. And through four rounds, it's four rounds, one for Rise Nation, and three out of the four players on Unilad currently have a zero to four score line. I was gonna say the closest round we've had has been like the two 1v3. So like every single <laughs> round has come down to like a 1v3, except for the first one where they just got completely wiped off the board. But I think it's just completely out strategizing your opponent realistically. Yeah. Like the first round, they trapped them all in the A-bomb site. The next round, they got double-nated, which really shouldn't ever happen in a round of search and destroy like ever. You should never be like grouped up or in a spot where that should happen, but it did. Uh, round number three, they just got picked apart of the beat. Like every single round, it's just Rise outplaying the other team in some capacity. Yep. Agree. Certainly agree with the sentiment you bring up here. As we're moving into round number five. TJ Holly yet to die in this game, and he's fully streaked out. You figure Rise Nation maybe want to play around these streaks, or definitely could use them as tools to gain information. As now, information gained for Slasher. And there you go, there's a first blood for Unilad. Shawnee now on the board with that one. Now TJ's going to push up the lane. Trades come in, down to a 2v2. Is that an Alex going up against Looney and TJ? Must win round. Unilad's got to get on the board. Alex finds his first kill. You get some uh, confidence going. But you see, DJ, he's working with Looney. They're going to be double challenging together. We got the same thing on the other side. The players line up, and Unilad get their first round on the board. They get a couple more kills in their pockets. And, well, I, I would say they shut TJ down, which is technically true. But you got to keep in mind, he is fully streaked out. So long way to go for Unilad. You know, obviously, it's nice that we have the full information here, but TJ could have used the fighter pilot. None of those players had mountain on, and potential there. They almost lined up for his bar shots as well. But Unilad, you found a round win. Let's see if you could build off this now. Obviously, they should know that TJ has these streaks, and look, on a map like Valkyrie, they're not going to have the biggest impact 
most uh, impactful over at the B bomb site with like an artillery or a glide bomb to take out like a bomb diffuser later in the round. But I don't see a lot of mountain being brought out by these guys on Unilad. So they're not afraid of the streaks at the very least it will be information game. It's not first blood coming in. Gunless will get immediately traded out. And that's how you do it, you know, lad. Even though you die first, you get the quick trade, you take out an impactful player on the map, and now you just play three on three. Whenever you, whenever you make an even trade like that, it's always going to favor the offensive team because now you're spreading out the defense across the map. They have more things to watch with less players. And you lad wasted no time. They immediately wrap back, are heading towards A, and it looks like they're going for a potential like 3v1 challenge on Slasher. Exactly He's aware of it, but we saw the first blood. Gunless was aware, but he gets picked. Now Slasher has has potentially the second player coming out for the double challenge, but no, they don't commit, and now they're a little bit trapped. Now they got a lot more to be worried about. They don't have map control. A little bit of a tougher spot for them. Okay, Nate does connect there onto Wuskin. He's forced to back up. And look, I don't mind that Unilite didn't commit to that challenge because they were all going to go through like this very narrow doorway. I think Slasher would have gotten the kills. And Slasher still has information that Wuskin is over here. And whenever you go for the plant over at the A bomb site, usually you plant for a guy in that window. And now they know the plant's going down over at the A bomb site. The glide bomb gets information, but Slasher does wind up falling to Wuskin. So that storage bunker window is going to be open. And there you go. It's a great round coming out of you, lad, here. You burn the glide bomb on the side of Rise Nation. You win two in a row. And maybe they're starting to build some momentum here in this series. And that's some super patient play coming from them as well. Like, even on the Gibraltar, when they were going for hill breaks, not getting, like, like I would, like, they listening to their, their comps time would be interesting. Yeah. Like, took their time, and, and that's not a bad thing. Like, being patient in that S&D round again, I thought maybe they should have just flooded on Slasher, but you make a good point. They're just getting funneled out. At best, you're just trading out one of the kills, and then you're in a 2v2. So I respect the decision, but uh, again, that's like a, a veteran move, you, you would say, for search and destroy. To be in a slightly risky spot, you, you got the time ticking down, but you have the, the cojones to take as much time as you need. That means balls in Spanish for play people out there who don't speak Spanish, but... Wuskin brings out the sniper, one and five, so obviously what he was doing earlier in this search and destroy wasn't working, so switch up the pace here despite that. A quick trade does come in for Unilad, back to a 3v3 situation, as now the assault is gonna happen down at that B bomb site. Rise Nation are set up, looking to get the objective down. Grenade does connect, Gunless does get spotted. Not a good challenge there from Alex, but the grenade is there for the trade. It's a 2v2, this is certainly a manageable position for Unilad to be in, but now you have Wuskin, he is gonna be able to find an STG, so he can challenge onto the site along with Zed. Bomb is down. You got players kind of hovering in the mid-map area. Zed's on the hunt. They've cleared a little bit out. And players are just side by side. He's going to see the gun as well. Takes the gunfight. Wins it with ease. TJ, though, the artillery on the bomb. I forgot that was a thing. Luskin, he's got to hunt for the kill. And TJ can kind of just do whatever he wants. Tough spot. Very just tough has spot. to stay alive. Obviously, the artillery is not going to last the full time. A couple seconds left. And that's going to be the round. TJ Halley, he's even going to use the fire pipe. So investing everything here. Is he gonna get spotted? He just walked right past DJ. There you go. Wuskin's there for the kill at least. So it will put Rise Nation on map winning round here. But no artillery left. No fighter pilot left. So now it's a, a peace of mind coming out from the side of Unilad. You no longer have to worry about those streaks being in play. You could swap off mountain comfortably and, and play on the map with the classes that you want to use but you can't make any more mistakes. I was going to say, it's a, it's a win, but a very, very small win. TJ it's absolutely positive. does it's the right thing. a positive takeaway. Yeah, but guaranteeing that fifth round up, being up 5-2, to two, it's almost as good as just solidifying the win. Of course, you got to make sure to not throw, uh, not make any mistakes. And this time, you see Rise Nation, they're triple stacking on defense over by the B site. So A is actually wide open, but now I got the issue. Waskins, he's got players that are going to be on the hunt. Is he aware of it? He's going to get the first kill. TJ is going to get there, but he's going to get traded out. Gunless finds a kill on the other side of the map, and he does not get traded. So the trade's not perfect. And again, Unilad without the man advantage. Yeah, and Rise Nation are able to do that because they have so many rounds to play with. You can afford to give up a couple rounds, and it's just a, a high-risk, high-reward play. You just be super aggressive on the flank, and if it works out, you win the round. If it doesn't, oh well. You, you have many more to look forward to throughout this map. In the meantime, it's down to a 2v2 situation. You have Gunless and Slasher up against Alex and Shawnee. You know I'd have to decide what bombsite they want to attack, and Slasher's in a great position to stop this from going down. Of course, we know that the bomb's currently being planted, and Slasher's gonna get great timing here. Bomb does get planted, a 1v2 for Alex, and now Slasher doesn't get traded out here. Alex's position is now known, and he has to try to find a way to reposition and defend this bomb from being defused. Gunless making sure to not over-challenge. He's just going for the shoulder peaks, throw out some utility, and he's gonna be trapped in. Alex gets caught on the reload. He was one bullet away. Yeah. One bullet away on Slasher. If he gets that first pick, that round is completely different. 
But one bullet makes a difference in Call of Duty, and even then it would have been a 1v1. But Unilad, a, a hope for Europe to get in a playoff spot, to get into the top four. They find themselves uh, down two to nothing uh, against, well, the best team in the game from Rise. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is going to be a learning experience for this Unilad lineup. Uh, this is the first time we're seeing them on land. And uh, if you haven't paid attention to the World War II rosters throughout the years, Zed's a new player. They, they lose Scraps, who's uh, widely considered as one of the best players in the European scene right now. So. Uh, certainly, some we some we don't really know what to expect from the United squad coming into Division B. Some moments of greatness or some moments of hope that we saw from them, but ultimately down 0-2 against Rise. Well, patient plays so far. The question is, does Unilad bounce back and re-get into the series for the CTF, or does Rise Nation find the quick 3-0? We will find out after this break.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have Rise Nation, our reigning champions of, well, the entire league, going against Unilad, who is a, a, a recently formed together roster. We've made uh, two roster changes on the year, actually, a team that was oh so close to making playoffs uh, this past season, season number one. The question is, can they make it for stage two? It's a tough question to answer. They don't look good so far, but we're only two maps deep and they're looking to turn things around on Forest. Yeah, plus you're going up against one of North America's finest. Uh, I think this is the expected result for many out there, but the, the main thing for Unilad is just improvement throughout the course of the division. Uh, I think they have the talent there. You just got to find a way to make it work. And, you know, you had some moments where you thought maybe uh, they were looking like they could handle Rise Nation early on in the hard point. They start to rebound a little bit, and they're searching to destroy. And now they have a great start here in the CTF. A couple players go down for Rise Nation. Now it's Shawnee putting pressure onto the spawns. But Gunless in the back, Zed's there for the trade. You get another touch on the flag, and now you're trying to get home free. It's going to be Alex here to cut off mid-map. Two players get past. That's one of them on Slasher. Now TJ Holly, if they could take him out, it's a guaranteed cap here for Unilive as they would strike first. Well, TJ is able to pick up, too. He's going to be on the hunt, but I don't think anyone's close enough. He's got airborne, so you can stun this man. You can nade this man, but it's going to be a little bit too late. And just like that, Unilad with the near-perfect start and the bounce back he thought was going to be there for a second, but Shawnee goes huge. He started out on a four streak. Now he's on a two-man, six and one. And we saw the exact same thing on Gibraltar. Unilad off the rip. Fantastic job. Yep, but they got to keep this pace up, right? They have to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rise Nation throughout the entire roughly 10 minutes of the game. It's Zed here in Dome as he falls. Pressure now onto Shawnee on the other side of the map, just trying to lock down the cabin side lane. He'll get caught a bit out of position there, as now it's going to be the defensive kills coming in for Unilad. As Ruskin stays alive, he's going to secure the spawns for Zed to spawn up right on the peg. Rise Nation, you see them stacking over towards the ruined side of the map. They don't want any presence over your cabin because you know that as you push onto the Unilag flag, they're going to be forced to spawn out near your cabin, and then it's just all you need to do is cut off the overextension, and you got a flag cap. Well, Looney's going to be the last player alive, and he's kind of waiting for those players to push past Cabin, but Zed's, he's already going to make it in a bunker. Looney they doesn't know give they're his looking team the information. Him, yeah. And DJ, yeah, he's not prepared for it, actually. Looney lets him pass. He's not aware. Slasher, those is there for the trade. Uh, and Unilad, yeah, a, a little bit slow to kind of put pressure on the no man side of things, but it was a little bit strange to see three players from Rise stacking the bottom side of the map. You see things vaguely similar to that, but not necessarily that exact same thing. And now as those kills wind up coming in over near bunker, immediately all three spawn TJ and Looney went on the overextension through ruins, but but once again, Unilad is here. They're set up for the kills, and now they can put up pressure once again. They know Slasher's the last alive on the map, and in the, their previous situation, they knew that Looney was alive. They just didn't know where he was located. So I think that's the reason why they were a bit slow to actually push up their cabin. You saw two players kind of frantically checking corner after corner, but now they have forward position to work with. You isolate TJ inside bunker, and now you can start to think about the Rise Nation flag. Zed just trying to jiggle peek here, playing with information, waiting for his teammates to push on up before they can get a touch. Now there's just one player to get past. It's going to be Slasher. Well, Zed's trying to bait out some bullets, and you see the reload comes in. The attack is not. And again, super patient play coming out from Unilad. And I guess situationally, it's the right thing to do because Shawnee is still on a tear. He's able to pick up another two on the wave, but then Gunless picks up two himself. Alex, the last hope, but he's got to get past Gunless, and that's not a gunfight he wants any part of. Meanwhile, Rise Nation's like, oh, this entire lane of the map is open. This is going to be a flag pull more than likely, but actually, TJ doesn't even know the spawn's coming in over by Cabin, so there is a gunfight to win, and the nade's going to clean him up. Yep, and, and once again, on that overextension, TJ and Looney, once again, those two players, while Slasher and Gunless are the ones just holding back Bunker and defending off the flag, just setting up this crossfire. Both times when Unilad have tried to get a touch after that first flag cap, it's been Slasher and Gunless just mowing them down as they exit through Bunker. Maybe you start to think about taking out a smoke grenade and blocking off that line of sight or providing yourself some instant cover and making the defenders feel a bit more uneasy around the map. But nonetheless, it's Zed holding this forward position for Unilad. He does get cleaned up eventually by Slasher as there's a minute 20 remaining in the first half. Rise Nation currently trying to set up a push as you have Looney pushing down the mid lane. TJ's going to rotate back to cut off that overextension through Bell while Slasher's holding cabin. Well, this is the first time that Unilad has really been stuck in their base in the slightest. And by stuck, I mean a lane for them is still going to be uh, pretty much wide open. Players are coming over for the retake. But this is the worst spot Unilad's been in. But they've been on point with the gunfights. You want to talk about players positive. Shawnee's on double so. Zed nearly double positive as well. Uh, of course, though, one player for Unilad's through. That's going to be Shawnee. Slasher sniffs it out. But what is it for us? TJ has to wrap all the way back. Oh. And again, Shawnee's been on points with the gunfights. He wins that. He's on three. He has the flag. And he is gone. Yeah, he swapped off of his infantry class, so these grenades being thrown at him aren't nearly going to have as big of an effect. 
Does cut down through the mid lane eventually as it's going to be Unilad going up 2-0. to zero. Slasher was in a position to earn some streaks there as well, so you shut him down before he's able to get anything going. While Shawnee, you're now 125 points away from the Glide Bomb. You can pick up that kill on Looney near back ice, but holding Cabin, actually he gets cut down. As now Rise Nation have a chance to answer back with 15 seconds remaining. Well, Walskin's got to go big. He's aware of the first. He's got to make sure to stop the flag coming out for the second. At least by time for his teammates to spawn up and help him, but he might not need the help. TJ's going to get taken down. Gunless gets the trade, but again, we talked about the teammates wrapping back. They say we don't need to. We can go get more flags. We're on good side. Don't get that return. Go get the pull. But Looney, he was able to backtrack and pick it up. Okay, so it's going to be Zed here to try to cut this off. He's the furthest player pushed up here for Unilad, just waiting. I think they know. Yeah, he's been spotted. TJ picks up the kill. Meanwhile, now it's Wuskin inside Bunker, but behind him are a couple of Rise Nation players. This is going to be a cap for Rise Nation, and going into half, it's going to be a 2-1 to one lead for Unilad, which is a, neat, a lead nonetheless. And that is a tough pill to swallow. Uh, if you're, well, on the team of Unilad and or a Unilad fan, they could have been up on this half. 2-0 or potentially even 3-0 if they played it a little bit better, but you see the play that they attempted to make. Go for the overextension instead of sending your entire team to wrap back to play safe. Played dangerously, and it did cost them, but still, an advantage is an advantage, and on Forest, you can absolutely hold a, flag, or a team to zero flag caps. The question is, can you hold Rise Nation to zero flag you caps? Know, I, I think that's the right play to make, too. I, I think if I'm in the same situation or if I'm calling for my team in that situation, I, I, I make the play call to go for that over extension and potentially make that offensive play happen. You have to have faith in your teammates to lock things down on the defensive end, and you know the lane's open. Why not push out? You saw Rise Nation try to do it a couple times, but they also got shut down and stuff that's they tried to push it out through ruins. But as we were talking about, Unilad have a lead. It's only by one flag, and Gunless is trying to get fully streaked out here. There you go. As he picks up one, he's going to earn his tier two and tier three streaks and the artillery barrage and fighter pilot. But at the Rise Nation flag, it's about to get pulled, and that's going to prompt the glide bomb usage here from Gunless. Now the question is who did he get kill? killed? Yeah, he dies. The glide bomb doesn't even stop anyone. It doesn't even slow him down. They're just going to be gone. Now it's going to be up to TJ. He's got to make the play. Has the gunfight up front that he wins. He needs to get out as well, and barely by the skin of his teeth, he is gone. Now the fighter pilot's getting called in from the back end. That's going to kill the flag carry. And number two, Slasher, he should be there for the return. He can just go dive this one in and all of a sudden rise. Even with a, a bit of a wasted glide bomb, took him a minute to get the flag they need. Okay, it does take two streaks, so now you don't lie. You don't have to worry about running mountain, right? Because the artillery barrage is the only thing remaining for Gunless. You should be keeping track of those streaks in play. But now, as you start to think ahead, you know, you have TJ with that flag cap. He can start working towards some streaks as well. He gets cut down. So, tied game, all things considered. You know, lad, you're still in a fine position. Just take some time, slow things down once again. They seem to work well on the map when things are moving at a slower pace, when they have time to think about the plays that they want to make and where they want to hit on the map. Yeah, uh, when things get chaotic, though, they're just gone. Looney's going to pull the flag, and at the very least, it should buy Gunless some time to maybe get the kill. But again, not over-challenging on gunfights. You know, is playing these situations. For the most part, very smartly. I think ultimately they just took a risk that didn't pan out, but still a tie game. Uh, you got a lot of time to work with. And again, most of the kills have been going the way of Unilad this entire game. Zed plus two, Luskin plus two. Yes, Alex is negative, but barely. And then Shawnee having a hell of a game so far, leading the lobby in kills with 18. Yeah, and I, I do agree with you there, Chance, but a lot of their kills are, are coming also on the defensive end, right? You know, cutting off the overextension and, and defending the flag. If they're able to find kills going their way on the offensive side of things, maybe they could find themselves back in the lead or, or up by a couple flags with some streaks to use. So now as they start to think ahead, look at the spread they now have on the map. Come around the back, it's going to be Alex. He's able to find one. The trade should start coming. And as those kills start to happen on the ruin side of the map, you want to see Shawnee and Zed start to pinch in from mid, from cabin. You need to make a coordinated push on the flag. And eventually, as you start to get a touch on the flag, you want to give up cabin. You want the other team spawning there so that you can cut off the overextension from bunker and mow them down as they push across field. Well, Rise Nation were aware of it. Looney took the time to go and hunt these players down. Shawnee gets taken down as well. So that was Unilad with full control, but now it's Rise's turn for the attack. And again, Unilad have had a, a couple solid defensive stands, but it gets tougher and tougher as time goes on. TJ Halley leading the charge. You got an artillery in the back, and Looney's getting the cutoff kills. This is a, a perfect ish situation if they can touch that flag. They should be able to. I think it's just out of range. Just going to wait till he's fully healed up before he commits to the flag grab. And there you go. He's going to get away with this one. And keep in mind, with the artillery being there near back bunker, it's also going to block off that spawn point. So Rise Nation know 100% that Unilad are going to be spawning out near back bell. And all they need to do is cut off the mid lane, cut off the push through dome. And this is a flag cap. And this is Rise Nation taking the lead.
And they get more streaks on board with it. And they don't have to worry about the counter because Slasher gets two with the PPSH of all guns and his teammate cleans up the third. So what do you do here? If you're Unilad, you got to burn two streaks. You got to get at least a flag. And Looney's wasting no time. He doesn't want to worry about control. He's like, you guys don't have Mountain yet. You don't know. You haven't had time to switch. Slasher finds another two piece. Now Rise Nation have complete control. And now they just don't need to die. They don't need more flags. They just need to stay alive. And actually, uh, a great spawn comes in for Unilad. It gives them an open lane. But still, they got to get the kills. And they got two so far. It was just a combined 14 kill spree between the members of Rise Nation. They're really starting to heat up when it comes the slang and you look at the side of Unilad, it's only Shawnee. Meanwhile, it's going to be Zed pulling the flag of Rise Nation, but the Glide Bomb's going to take care of him. And really, the streaks are so impactful here on a map like Arden Forest. The Fire Pilot coming in, going to spot the remaining players from Unilad. They've been unable to switch to Mountain because they only got 40 seconds left, and it's a tough decision to make because you switch to Mountain, then all of a sudden, lethal grenades, tactical grenades, depending on if you have Hunker or Instinct, they're going to have uh, an effect on you in the game and slow you down, slow down that pace. Rise Nation get another flag cap on the board. They go up by two with 25 seconds remaining. You still have Strix to use as well. This game, this series, it's done and dusted. Rise Nation open up Division B on a hot note with a hot 3-0 over Unilad. And Revan, you got your answer as well. A at the end of the first half when Unilad, remember, they go for the overextension and instead of sitting and saying, we're comfortable with the two flag lead, we want to go and get the third, but it cost them. Instead of being up in half 2-0, it was only 2-1. And, and you said you think what Unilad should do is they made their right call. Go for the overextension, run up I'm also a maniac in possible. game, dude. I sprint nonstop. But uh, again, it makes sense because we saw just how many flags Rise was able to get in that second half. So Unilad, again, they played every single map smart. They had a clear-cut game plan going in for specific hills on Gibraltar, for certain rounds situationally in the SND, and even for CTF. They, they played a little bit controlled. The issue is they're just going against Rise, so I say no love lost. The expectation is for Rise to win that game. The expectation is for Rise to get that 3-0. It's just their job done. Yeah, now looking ahead for Unilad, you got Optic Gaming coming up later in the day, so not a lot of time to really think about some of the things that went wrong in the series, but, you know, I agree with you, Chance. I think they had some good moments throughout that series. It's just a matter of fact that they got outpaced by Rise Nation, you know. After that first rotation of hills, they just couldn't keep up to that same pace that they had to open up the map, and then obviously things just didn't go their way. Easy to say in the search and destroy, but they had it in that CTF. They had a lead. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get any streaks to back up their play, and things just snowball out of control once Rise Nation start get going. And, and I know it's one, like, series one deep. Series. We don't want to make any hot takes, but, like, my expectation for Unilad coming in is I've had them at seventh. I had Tainted Mines at the bottom, Unilad just above them. I didn't think they were going to look good. And, yes, it was a 3-0, which isn't the best results. But, again, on all three maps, they looked solid. Uh, solid excuse me. They showed a lot of promise, and, like, you lose scraps, a, a superstar player, right? Like, who's going to step up for the team? Shawnee had a hell of a series. Yeah. Uh, again, you got to give full credit to the players for Unilad. They played it well. Rise is just better. Uh, and again, the new haircut or the new hairstyle maybe coming in for Gunless. You talk about him going Super Saiyan. The man looked good so far. Rise Nation, again, kicking things off with that hot 3-0. Uh, and Unilad, we'll see if they can bounce back later in the day. Next series we got on board, E United versus LG, which we will get to after this commercial break.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we just saw Rise pretty much run the entire show here to start things off. Question is, were they really tested yet? We want to see a lot out of Rise. They're obviously a team that needs to show that they can repeat performances that they've had in the past. Unilad, on the other hand, a team now with a new roster trying to see what they can get going. And it's not going to get any easier for them today. They're going to be playing against the new green wall. But welcome back. My name is Rich. I'm joined on the desk once again by Merck and Nameless. Let's break down a little bit of the action that actually did go down. There were a few glimmers of hope there for Unilad. Yeah, I, I think so. Early on in Gibraltar, they start up 55 to nothing. They do pretty well at the second hill. They rotate to Castle Road. They had about a 70 point lead and then that first cave hill came around and Rise got a full 60. And we've been seeing time and time again where cave has become a really strong hill for a lot of teams on Gibraltar. Then it was about 90-90 after the first rotation of hills and then Rise went away with it. They had like a 51 to nothing Castle Road. I saw JP tweet out. So after that first half and you know you and i were talking that you know the first game may be a little bit more competitive just because rise they've been just at home for a while right sort of getting yeah. those those juices flowing it might take a little bit maybe the ice man thawed out a little yes. bit the the other glimmer of hope though i was mentioning what well, it did come on capture the flag they start out 2-0 up but nameless you seem to not even think that those glimmers of hope were particularly shiny if you will they they weren't going to win that match rise is too good these are your seattle champions they came here they haven't missed a beat they just three old them the maps weren't even close i mean during the maps there were certain times where you know lad did something that looked decent but i mean they're in the pro league so they're obviously going to be able to shoot straight a little bit and rise just did what we expect them to do they won 3-0 the maps were not close and rise isn't starting slow in this tournament like they did at seattle they have the confidence from that championship they're looking great. It's exactly what you need to be in the pro league. Shoot straight and wait, a little bit. And, and Rich, uh, I believe you said you were going to get some frosted tips, right? Gunless did indeed. You got to do it. They won. He's so. got to do it. Yeah. I'm going to hit up his color. The colorist. We'll figure that out. Uh, 3-0, I think, warrants me. I, I think I'll get a little bit better. It definitely worked for Gunless. Question, though, that I do have. Uh, Unilad. Do we actually get to see how they look at all, or was this just too dominant of a performance? I mean, we saw some good things. Like, yeah. he, they had some hot starts. You can't be mad. Like, coming into this day, you're expected to go to 0 2. Like, just plain and simple. They didn't get any map wins, but if they happen to take a map or two off of Optic, send it to a game five potentially, then it's a good day. If you beat Optic, it's a great day. Again, these are teams they aren't supposed to beat. Like, the. I, I guess the I would probably say the rest of the division they could probably be competitive with, but you, you gotta win maps too, though. which is tough. You gotta win maps. Like yeah. even if you're playing Optic or, or Rise or any of these LG EU, these top teams, you have to take maps because we know when that fourth place spot comes around. I've been there before. It happens to all these teams time and time again. Maps can be they can dictate whether you make it into playoffs or not. So if I'm Unilad, I'm thinking, okay, maybe we're not prepared like prepared enough to win this match against this team, but we need to win some maps. So whatever their weakest map is, let's capitalize on it formulate a game plan and win it and that's going to be like i think that's the de deciding factor of whether they're going to make it into playoffs or not if they win a couple of those lower matches they don't have much time to change things either there's going to be one match and then it goes back to them playing against optic gaming so keep unilad in your mind right now we're going to be seeing a little bit